Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Ketamine Clinic's weekly 3 o'clock, apparently not quite always 3 o'clock, live stream. We're very happy to have you with us. We're a little late today because we also see patients on Friday, and they do come first. But I'm very glad that you joined us, and I'm very glad to be speaking with you. Today, uh, we have a nice rainy day. We really need that here. I use the word nice advisedly. Some of you are a little depressed, but the rain really will make you smile as the flowers bloom in April, at least or in May. That's the hope. We're going to talk a little about PTSD today. We've just added a new page on our website. Uh, it's interesting. Ketamine is largely used now for depression and for suicidality. It's wonderful for that. I've spoken about it before, and I'll be happy to do it again. But ketamine actually, aside from its use as an anesthetic, was discovered to be a psychoactive substance for treating mood disorders with PTSD, primarily with veterans returning from, they weren't veterans at the time, from active duty people having surgery and waking up having had a successful anesthetic. and. Very smart people noticing, wow, this guy not only did okay at surgery, but his, his mood seems better. And patients reported that their nightmares are not as frequent. They're not startling as much. They're not triggered into rages so easily. This was very perplexing. One, guy, somebody, one day somebody said, gee whiz, I wonder if it's the ketamine, because that seemed to be the common element. Well, ketamine was tried for PTSD, and it proved to be very effective. And PTSD is a very serious problem among former military and people who have been traumatized. In fact, 22 active or former military commit suicide every day in this country. Ketamine is fabulous for suicide. If, if they had it, I'm quite confident that a substantial portion of those patients, probably most of them, would reconsider their urge to hurt themselves. Ketamine also does very well for people who are suffering from PTSD. To find relief from their nightmares, their startling, their disinterest in those who love them. It's a very remarkable therapy. We use the same approach that uh, we use for depression, slightly higher doses. In fact, we offer uh, service-connected PTSD patients a 10% discount. We want to help these people, and we want especially to help them before they harm themselves. So that's what we do for PTSD. Uh, most of them come here diagnosed with it, and most of them have had many psychoactive substances before coming here without much relief. Dr. Mandel, as you mentioned, we do a similar or the same approach for treating PTSD as we do uh, depression, at least as far as the protocol goes, correct? Yes, that's right. For those who may not be familiar with that protocol, uh, the protocol that we do use for depression, um, do you mind just quickly touching on what that is? Yes, we, we uh, register people for six infusions. They're really committed to only the first two, but we want them to have room on the calendar for the other four because... We want them to, the intervals between infusions matter. And we want them to have room on the calendar to have their subsequent infusions if they choose to go forward with them. The first two infusions are two days apart. Uh, ideally, we like to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We've also done uh, other combinations with quite good results. The point is that there has to be an interval and that the healing really takes place between infusions as a result of what gets stimulated in the brain during infusions. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. And um, that's an interesting distinction that you just made that I think a lot of people would like to hear maybe a little bit more about is this notion that a lot of the healing actually occurs in between treatments, not just during treatment. If I Correct me if I'm wrong, but ketamine has a rather short half-life. No, you're right. Actually, ketamine has a half-life, depending on how you assess it, of about two hours and 45 minutes. In that time, the ketamine 
or one of its active metabolites uh, stimulates a series of neurochemical events that lead to uh, the elaboration of what's called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. And that brain-derived neurotropic factor stimulates actual growth in the brain, new, new synapses, new connections. We haven't actually so shown this in human beings, but we have actually proven this in animal models. And it's really quite remarkable. If you then redepress these animals, those same areas of the brain involute again. And if you again treat them with ketamine, they again grow. It's quite remarkable. Yeah, that really is amazing, especially being that um, as far as we know, the majority, if not all, the medications that people take nowadays need to uh, build up uh, to a uh, certain uh, therapeutic level in the blood, and they take time to do so. And, and their, their benefits, if they are seen, are seen um, as long as that level of medicine is maintained in the blood. So essentially, if, it, if the patient were to decrease their dose or stop taking it, they're likely to not see those effects continue. Is that correct? That's an important distinction. Yes, people are able to maintain their own wellness once the ketamine starts this process. It may, in fact, decline over time, but it doesn't decline uh, just because the medicine went out of their body. In fact, um, with most medicines, once the medicine goes out of your body, you stop having the positive effect. Right. Ketamine starts a, a process, the effect of which lasts days to weeks to months after the ketamine is, is gone from the body. What is a good average um, duration that you see in your patients in terms of the amount of time that they see uh, a benefit from the treatment? Patients typically get three to four months relief from their series of infusions. I'm talking about depression patients. And we have great spectrum here. We had a patient here last Friday who was here after 14 months. He'd had no additional medications, and he was relieved of his depression for 14 months. But typically, I think patients can expect three to four months. We have patients who don't get quite as much, and of course we have some patients who don't benefit. But over 80% do, and of those who do, they have uh, better than a 50% relief for more than three months. Wow, excellent. And these are mostly treatment-resistant um, patients as well, correct? Or at least patients who have uh, treatment-resistant depression. Not to say that our patients or that these patients are resisting treatment, but that their condition itself is, has been resistant to other forms of therapy. That's right. Almost everyone who comes to our clinic has exhausted most of the other pharma pharmaceutical options. They are um, veterans of every kind of SSRI, SNRI, atypical, antipsychotic, uh, mood stabilizer, and uh, anti-seizure medicine. They've had multiple medicines in adequate dose before they get here. Now, do you think that that's necessarily a requirement or that, um, you know, I guess if I could rephrase my question, you know, for our viewers, um, for those who maybe haven't fully exhausted all of the other available treatment options, would you advise them to do so prior to contacting you or considering this treatment, or do you think it might be a possibility for them uh, prior to kind of getting to the end of that list? Well, this is a moving target. When we first started this, it was considered uh, almost experimental, and we did urge people to exhaust every more conventional possibility. That was several years ago, and it was before we appreciated how amazing ketamine is for suicidality. So I no longer feel that patients have to exhaust every other remedy before they try mine. Quite the contrary. Ketamine works more quickly. It's safer. It has fewer adverse side effects. And it takes very much less time. So I would say ketamine has moved up the food chain where therapies of you know, therapies that are effective go. Absolutely. Uh, particularly if people are suicidal. They can't wait six or eight weeks for an SSRI or an SNRI to become active. They should really get their ketamine now.
They can be relieved of their suicidal thinking in hours to days. Even the few patients who don't respond with an elevation in their mood, almost all of them are relieved of their impulse to harm themselves. Wow. So uh, would you say that it works even more commonly, uh, the, the treatment more commonly relieves the, those, those thoughts of self-harm than it does even the, the symptoms of depression? Yes, actually, ketamine, as, a, as effective as it is for depression, and that's over 80% in our clinic, it's even more effective for suicidal thinking. It's remarkable. Dr. Murnau, thank you so much. I know you have patients here still this afternoon, and uh, it's been quite a busy Friday. Um, do you have anything else that you wanted to share with, uh, with our viewers before we uh, call it a week? I hope you all have an amazing weekend. I hope you'll all join me next Friday at 3 p.m. for another episode of the Ketamine Saga. Thanks for being here.